Hey traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is August 30th, 2016, last uh, day of August trading tomorrow. And we want to take a look at the Nikkei actually today. So dollar yen uh, has turned up nicely, um, just made an intramonth reversal, meaning we traded up through the early August high. In fact, we had we peaked for a time on, I think it was, it was actually August 1st, uh, August 1st or August 2nd, I'm not quite sure, but uh, we, you know, went down to the lows earlier this month, just kind of, you know, sat around the lows, and then we've turned up sharply just this week. And the Nikkei is an interesting uh, chart because you got from the 2009 low, if you remember, if I were to just put a dollar yen chart on here, okay, just put the close of dollar yen on here. Um, all right, so here's dollar yen, okay? As you can see here. Let's move it to the left, scale. Okay, you see a little better there, right? And it's in orange, dollar yen. The Nikkei's in black. The Nikkei bottomed back in, in 09, right? As equity indices did. Um, you had dollar yen, you know, trade down to new lows for several years. Okay, uh, here was the 09 low, if you remember, in dollar yen and UK in the index. From that point on, you know, at times, sure, they continued to move together, but really they didn't start moving in lockstep again, um, really until they, they started turning higher together. And at that point, you had, again, new lows, new trend lows, all-time lows in the dollar yen exchange rate, yet the Nikkei index was holding above its 2009 low. You kind of have something similar here, albeit on a smaller scale, uh, the February lows, the Nikkei have never been broken. All right, and we've actually continued lower in dollar yen. Obviously, we, you know, broke the February lows uh, some time ago. Okay, and we've continued lower and continued lower. Well, you could have a mini version of this, and uh, simply looking at the price of the Nikkei index, you could certainly see upside acceleration from, you know, nearby, uh, or I should say from right here, you do have, you know, a well-contained, a well-formed bullish channel with price. Uh, if we look, this is a weekly chart, but if we look at the daily chart, this is a chart that uh, showed several weeks ago to SB clients, and uh, they should be aware of this, but 200-day average is coming up here, um, really just above today's high, where we are right now. Uh, so the red line that you have right here is actually the BOJ uh, when they didn't do anything and people thought that they would disappoint the market and everything else. Well, since then, the market's actually reestablished above the level. Levels just support two days ago, in fact, and here we are uh, testing resistance on a slope basis and really making our own uptrend now. Okay, and then you can see the you know, head and shoulders uh, labels here. What happens here is if you take out 17,247, that's the 531 high, May 31st high, you actually get a head and shoulders failure pattern. This is a failure in its own right, and that, you know, is a bullish signal. So there's a lot to like about this chart. Um, you know, higher highs, higher lows, dip could be, you know, five waves up, very small second wave. It's possible that you are in a third wave higher. Uh, in the in the Nikkei index again one two three four five okay being one or a and then this dip here being B or two it's very small in time compared to this but that's not a rule there's no rule on time it just simply states that you get movement in the opposite direction um, typically down near the fourth wave of one less degree so it is a shallow correction in terms of uh, price and time but it does not eliminate the possibility of you going higher from here. And really trading is about understanding what the possibilities are. And in this case, uh, the risk, you know, posed from really an acceleration uh, phase rally in a third or C wave is that's where the risk is, okay, um, at this point. So, you know, I know it's difficult to kind of Think about this in terms of, say, the S&P 500. All right, uh, you know, there, I'll get a lot of questions, I'm sure, on this saying, well, how can you 
to be looking at this when you have the S&P pressing these levels. Uh, does this mean the S&P is going to continue to go higher? No, it does not. Um, in fact, this doesn't actually mean that, you know, this chart here, I'm talking about the breakout possibility in the Nikkei. This doesn't mean I'm right at all. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm just looking at the possibilities uh, as far as the S&P 500 is concerned. If the Nikkei were to trade up towards the top of its range, let's just say if. Okay, you're currently under 17,000. Let's say that you trade up to 20,000. Does that mean the S&P has to go higher? No, it does not. In fact, the S&P and the Nikkei, as you can see, have significantly diverged, okay? Back here. In February, Nikkei, they rallied together into April. We've continued to new highs in the S&P. The Nikkei has gone straight down. Okay, they've diverged this way. That means they can diverge the other way. There's no rule that says every stock market in the world has to move together. Um, in fact, it's probably been more the exception than the rule until uh, you know post-crisis situation. Everyone thinks things are you know everything moves together all the time because they did into 2000 uh, or into 2009 lows and afterwards. But look, it's not the case all the time. Okay, so uh, point of this video is really just to show that I do like the upside possibilities in the Nikkei. You are testing a big level uh, here as far as resistance and a break higher. You know, kind of sets you on a quick path, in my opinion, up towards uh, you know just shy of eighteen thousand. Which again, this might act as kind of uh, you know helping a long dollar yen on the upside, which itself looks quite constructive after the moves we've seen over the last couple days, okay? Uh, there are other yen cross trades out there. I think they look pretty good. For example, NSB, uh, sbtradedesk.com, we are long pound yen. We have been now for not quite two weeks. Um, so we're floating pretty decent uh, move right now, and we'll be highlighting moves to uh, kind of trade the trade, if you will over the next couple of weeks and maybe longer uh, in pound yen. One of the better looking crosses in my opinion right now for the yen. Okay, so that's it. Um, again, that's it. That's the Nikkei index. Very interesting chart. Uh, I'm sure if it were to turn higher through this resistance, it would kind of surprise you know, a good deal of folks and that's how the best moves do tend to happen. They often happen pretty fast as well. All right, so, but don't make any assumptions on the S&P 500 uh, with the Nikkei, okay? You wanna look at what the S&P 500 is or isn't gonna do, look at the S&P 500. Okay, don't look at the Nikkei to trade the S&P. Look at the S&P to trade the S&P, look at the Nikkei to trade the Nikkei. All right, so I'll leave you with that. And uh, Jamie Setley here signing off. Take care and good luck.